Antonio Golden Gandy has decided to hang up the cleats. Just after a couple of years in the NFL, AGG, who was a fourth round draft pick for the Washington football team in 2020, has decided to hang up the cleats and go back to college. I applaud him for doing this. When it comes down to it, I think education ultimately is the most important thing that you can have in your life. A lot of people though may think that this was kind of an odd move on uh, AGG's part, but this is something that I think that he felt like he needed to do. We were gonna try him at the tight end position. We were hoping to convert him to a tight end position this time. And you know, <laughs> I guess it just wasn't gonna work out for Antonio Golden Gandy. So I wish him well, I really do. I think uh, anytime that you decide that, hey, I wanna go back to school, I want to know that I have a future ahead of me after football, I think that's always the smartest thing to do. And maybe he felt that his body would just not hold up to the rigors of the NFL. And there's, again, there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But, you know, that also puts in a lot of question marks as to our tight end position. But, you know, we did draft a guy this year that we're kind of excited about. And I think he's, gonna, he's we're going to have some good things with him. And then, of course, we've got John Bates from last year who we drafted. I think that John Bates can be more of the, what you call the, the blocking, he'll go out for a pass every now and then, a, a Don Warren type of tight end. And I think that he will probably fill in pretty nicely for us. Uh, we just need to make sure that we have some, some guys in there who can, you know, kind of fill that void until we can get Logan Thomas back healthy again, which is probably going to take a little bit. Now, also, finally, Dan Snyder decides that he is going to um, testify in front of the oversight committee, and it wasn't just for a couple of hours. No, it was just short of 11 hours, 11 hours that Dan Snyder testified in front of the House Oversight Committee. Now, I don't have any of the details as to what all was was being said because i think all of that is still being unpacked even today i mean you gotta think that's 11 hours of content so that's probably going to be its own video there i know some of you guys hate when some of us youtubers put out videos just on the dan snyder saga but you know he is part of the team and hey i mean ownership that's that's pretty important i mean you know if we changed ownership i mean that would that would change things dramatically with this franchise. So, you know, we do have to report on that. I am very eager to find out all the details. Like I said, <laughs> that might be a, that might have to be a video series right there. I mean, breaking down 11 hours of testimony. And of course, training camp started this week and we're getting some first looks at Carson Wentz, getting some first looks at Sam Howell, which is very interesting. You know, Sam Howell uh, had some good days, had some up and up and down days, but he had some very nice passes as well. Uh, one to Harmon. Um, Carson Wentz had some very nice passes to Dotson. And uh, then he had some passes that were a little high but you know what there's still some chemistry trying to be established between quarterback and wide receiver this is why obviously you have otas right um and then you have training camp and and all of that stuff so it's going to be interesting to see i cannot wait to see the first preseason game although i'm sure we probably won't see a lot of carson wentz probably won't see a lot of Terry McLaurin or Jahan Dotson. Maybe we will see a little bit more Jahan Dotson, but um, I, I will be very interested to see what we have with Sam Howell. I've also heard reports out of training camp that Taylor Heineke's arm strength has improved. That's great news because if Taylor Heineke has worked on his arm strength, He's going to be a solid backup for us. You know, if anything happens to Carson Wentz, we know 
that Taylor Heineke can step in and win us a few football games. Chase Roy Roulet, <laughs> Royale, it's almost like, I don't like a cheeseburger royale. Um, so Chase Roulet, I'm still not going to get his last name right. Roulet, and it's probably still not right, but it's close enough. Our, st our starting center finally cleared. He's off of the PUP list. He's active. That's great news for us. We have to have a healthy offensive line, especially going into this season. And to have Chase back, uh, you know, under center is just, well, under center, he is the center. But to have Chase back as center is just going to be uh, great for us, for the offensive line, for continuity. Um, that center position is extremely important, guys. I mean, you don't understand center also... Uh, will help to call out, you know, protections and stuff like that along with the quarterback as well. So, and he helps to kind of get everything in place. Certainly helps with the timing of the snaps and all of that. So, to have Chase back there, big old CR back there, and he is, is ready to resume his role as the starting center is just going to make this offensive line hopefully a, as solid as they played last year, knowing that we had a complete rotation throughout the entire season. As for the other Chase that is on the physically unable to perform list, Chase Young, our star defensive end, it's going to be some time before we're going to see him. Um, I don't expect, honestly, to see him until maybe midway through um, because you know they are not going to rush Chase Young back. There's just no way you rush Chase Young back into the starting lineup. And even when he is healthy to play, I bet they only put him in for a play or two. It may take until next year before I think that they are completely comfortable enough to say, leave him in there. But I would not expect him to really get back in there until midway through the season. And then it, even with that, there's gonna be a light rotation for Chase Young until that we feel like that that knee is strong enough. I'm saying we because, you know, of course, I'm part of the coaching staff and the medical staff, right? Until that the staff feels like he is good enough to, to turn him loose and say, you don't have anything to worry about Chase Young. So um, we have to rely on Montez Sweat to stay healthy, Deron Payne to, to bring the pain, John Allen to be the leader, which I've heard. In training camp so far, John Allen has been that leader, and you could see it. When you get Chase Young back there, man, I really feel like that defensive line is going to be dominant once more. Well, folks, we're in training camp. We're just counting down to the first preseason game. I can't wait. Um, I am so excited to have football back. I am also excited to be back and to hopefully recording some videos back on a regular basis for you guys. As you all know, I've had a lot going on. Uh, we had a funeral for my, my father yesterday. Um, wonderful, wonderful person, great Christian man, um, hard worker, the hardest working guy you will ever meet. I mean, 81 years old, the guy was still working, still holding down a job. I could tell you stories all day long, but you know, one of the really important things about my dad, he was a Redskins fan, right? He grew up in Abington, so, you know, basically Redskins country, you know, and so he had been a Redskins fan all his life. Now he started kind of wavering there toward the end because I think he was just like, look, you know, this whole mess with the team is just, you know, it was starting to wear thin on him, but he still... No matter how much he tried to say that, yeah, you know, I think I'm going to start pulling for the Saints or I'm going to start pulling for the Vikings or somebody like that. He still pulled for Washington because it was in his blood. And it's always been in the Sykes blood. Uh, well, at least me and my dad. Now, you know, I do have a brother who is a Dallas Cowboys fan. I uh, don't hold that against him. Um and I think my other brother actually pulled for the Giants. Um, don't know how much football he actually watches, but uh, so at least we kept it in the NFC East. So that was always, you know, interesting growing up. Um, 
you know, having a Dallas Cowboys fan, New York Giants fan, and Redskins fan in the house, but at least we knew which ones was the smartest one, right? Folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like it. I really need those likes. Share it with other people. Um, this is the Washington Football Maniacs channel, and please consider subscribing. Stick with me, folks, because we are going to have a lot of fun on this channel, and I hope that that is obviously true. Anyway, take care. Let's jump into the next video, which starts in just a few seconds. Can't seem to get out, but something deep